A recent reporting on sex trafficking raised use of websites that allegedly tolerate child sex trafficking. According to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, 73% of children trafficked for prostitution are found on a site they identify as Backpage. How can that be? In part because of a 20-year-old law that protects internet free speech and by consequence, websites used for sex trafficking. Lisa Fletcher has the story. There were girls that were really, really young, but um, honestly, that's what the Johns want. And so, it's not something that we even thought about at all. When Andrea Benson worked as a prostitute in Portland, Oregon, she knew that the clients wanted their girls young. Even when I was in the life, um, I put that my age was 19, and guys would just be like, well, you don't look like you're 19. You look like you're younger. You look like my granddaughter. You look like my daughter. Benson claims she was trafficked on Backpage, an online classified advertising site. This is a business model that makes $9 million a month using this exploitive model. Carol Robles Roman heads Legal Momentum, a group suing Backpage on behalf of a Jane Doe client who claims to have been trafficked on Backpage and two other advocacy groups who support victims of sex trafficking, including children. These are kids, these are young kids, these are minors, and there's no justification, there's no way to, to defend it. No one alleges that Backpage is running a prostitution or trafficking ring. They did not turn away ads selling children. However, we in January, know. a Senate Homeland a Security Subcommittee on battle. Investigations concluded that Backpage knowingly facilitated online sex trafficking. Among the findings, Backpage has knowingly concealed evidence of criminality by systematically editing its adult ads. And Backpage knows that it facilitates prostitution and child sex trafficking. There should not be a vehicle that has made the trafficking of kids so easy, right? Hey, you want to order a pizza? Sure. Hey, you want to order a kid? Just as easy. A 20-year-old law has made it difficult for critics to shut Backpage or any similar site down. Tucked into the Communications Decency Act is a short provision known as Section 230 that shields websites and internet platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and Backpage from liability over objectionable content posted by users. Section 230 is really one of the cornerstones of free speech online. Emma Alonzo works for the Center for Democracy and Technology, which is funded in part by Silicon Valley to prevent restrictions on the internet. If I were for some reason to tweet something defamatory about you, you could of course sue me for saying something defamatory, but you couldn't sue Twitter for having published that defamation uh, worldwide. And that's a really, really key protection. Um, if companies were vulnerable to lawsuits over the content of the speech that their users are posting every day, um, they would very quickly basically be sued out of existence. Twitter was sued in 2016 for allegedly providing material support for Islamic extremists who killed two American contractors. But the case was dismissed using protections in Section 230. According to the congressional report, Backpage tried to appear as though it was fighting trafficking by editing out code words for minors like fresh and new to town to make the ads look, quote, cleaner than ever. But congressional investigators found Backpage was actively allowing the traffickers to operate and pocketing the ad revenue. By fixing the ad, you don't cure the criminality, right? That's still a kid that's being listed online. What about these, the civil liberties and the free speech advocates who say if you were to win your case would have very significant implications on free speech very broadly across the globe? Yeah, there would be implications on free speech. You cannot sell children online for sex. That's the implication. The First Amendment does not protect criminal conduct. Critics of yours will say this is just a bunch of legal acrobatics that protect pimps and protect traffickers while kids are being raped. 
These are a bunch of legal standards that have existed in our country for 20 years to protect the ability for all of us to use the internet for freedom of speech and access for access to information. We would not have the incredible array of um, online publications, social media sites, search engines, uh, other websites that we have today without a law like Section 230. So is anything being done about the apparent loophole? Sort of. There are other lawsuits that have taken on Backpage, like Robles Ramans, and have lost. But right now, there is a bill that's working its way through Congress. And if it's successful, it'll amend those broad protections in 230, and it will hold the publishers accountable for sex trafficking. We did reach out to Backpage, and they declined to comment. All right, Lisa. Thanks again.